first of all, disclaimer, I'm just a teacher bouncing some ideas here. I don't have the answers, and I certainly don't want to tell anybody how to teach. But I do have some thoughts. I've been trying to wrap my brain around what planning for a hybrid model of instruction might look like. Like most of us, I'm very comfortable with the traditional secondary schedule. To help make sense, I've made a spreadsheet I think others might find helpful to visualize the many moving parts of the hybrid schedule. Link in the description. I also explain how I plan on using Microsoft Teams to adapt to this hybrid model. In a traditional secondary schedule, frequently, all sections of a course meet on the same day, which aids in planning instruction. In the hybrid model, I think of the groups as the conceptual planning block rather than the periods. Because within a course, each group, regardless of the period, tends to receive the same instruction as they have the same meeting days. This is a little different than a traditional schedule where all the students in a section receive the same instruction on any given day. Effectively, I think the hybrid schedule is almost like having 10 group hyphen period cohorts. So I'm choosing to organize columns by group. If you prefer, you can organize by period. Regardless, you can see the live meeting days are automatically color coded based on the day of the week and the group schedule. You can see that group one and group two are staggered by one day. Is it better to think of learning as taking place a week at a time, Monday through Friday? This would mean group one ends the week remotely, while group two doesn't have their second live class of the week until Friday. Just to clarify, typically, no student is in your room for more than one period a day. It's just that for planning purposes, because period one and period eight are in the same group and the same course, they're probably going to be doing the same thing that day. So to help you plan, I put those next to one another. Perhaps it's better to think of a week of instruction as a five-day sequence that runs Monday through Friday for group one and Tuesday through Monday for group two. Will you teach in a rigid sequence? Or will your two groups have slightly different sequences of lessons? Will Wednesdays be dedicated to a specific purpose? Or will they simply be what happens after the previous day? I'm not prescribing a way of teaching. I'm simply presenting a framework and a tool to help us think through what this could look like. That said, I do want to share a few initial thoughts about my own classroom. I anticipate teaching the same in-person lessons to groups one and two. For remote days, my current thinking is that I will pre-record a two to five minute video where I quickly recap important ideas and frame a specific task for students. I want the task to take place mostly within the scheduled class time. I want it to make students in the cohort, the group hyphen period cohort, actually want to interact live virtually whether that is through chat, a conference call, or maybe even a video call. It's a little weird because I'm not there, but that's the nature of where we are right now. To have an accountability and feedback mechanism. I want students to have a way that in addition to just showing up and checking that they are there, there's something where they're actively engaged and have to turn in uh, something. I want to keep the workload manageable, both for myself and for the students. I also want what students do to affect the next lesson. The feedback I give them and the lesson I give them is tailored a little bit to their actual thoughts, almost like when we have class for real. I want what they do to matter. So how do we make that happen? The short version is we're going to use Microsoft Teams. I did use Teams last spring with all of my courses. The feedback I got from students indicated that they prefer to go to the same place every time and to have a limited number of channels within the team. They like consistency. They like to know where to find the class notes, the files, and where to find and turn in assignments. They absolutely loathe busy work and they long for feedback. They're more likely to interact in smaller groups and far less likely to actively participate in a large virtual setting. My plan that I've settled on, based on what I learned last year and what I now know about the hybrid schedule, 
is that I'm going to set up a team for each course that I teach. And within that course, I want there to be a standard channel for each cohort mirroring the hybrid schedule. The reasons for this are so that this public channel allows me or the students to record the meeting if, if we want to. It also allows me to quickly record just the touch of a button. It lives right there in the meeting, right where it happens. Uh, video feedback I can give to that small group of students or the opposite is also true. They can explain to me their challenges in a video format or just type the questions. In any case, it's a channel just for them. Students in this cohort can carry on a discussion, chat, or conference call as they work on the daily task. I realize not all teachers will be comfortable with their students interacting without the teacher present, uh, but that again is, is where we're at. The group can also pose questions to me and I can respond asynchronously on the chat or perhaps with a little video, or I can use that as feedback that I can incorporate into the next school lesson. Now there may be times where I want different cohorts to view or comment asynchronously with each other. That's another reason why I want these channels to be public. Public within the team, not public outside of the team. As someone who does much of my handwritten instruction through OneNote and Class Notebook, I like that each cohort will have its own Notes tab by default, which is really a section of the Class Notebook for the team. Uh, students can add to that and I can add to that. There's also, obviously there has to be, a general channel. This is where I anticipate disseminating whole course information. If I was to meet with a period on Wednesday, I would likely record the meeting on this channel. When I meet with another period, I will probably also have it on the general channel because I'm trying to keep the number of channels small. This channel, the general channel, is also where I'd like students to go for assistance, both from myself and from peers, and to seek clarification. Just like in person, I think it's really important to establish a positive and academic culture in teams. On the general channel, you will find a files tab. It's worth noting that the class materials folder is a folder that is only read access for students. Everything in this folder students can read but can't add to. I anticipate making subfolders by unit. There may be an additional channel or channels for specific purposes, but my students made it clear last spring that they really preferred less channels. So they were not a fan of when I had channels for uh, individual units. So I'm going to keep one channel where each cohort goes. Now for accountability, I might require students to make comments within their cohorts channel. Uh, I might use forms to collect feedback. Uh, I might use the Teams assignment feature to have students upload a document or picture. These would mostly be designed to take place within the one class period while class is actually happening. I might also have a weekly problem set or an assessment. I really have a lot of thinking, as do all of us, onto what that might uh, look like. I'm really trying to find the line between adequate accountability and feedback and asking too much of students. I want to be judicious with how much class time bleeds into time outside of the traditional school day, what we would call homework. So again, I don't have all the answers, but I definitely know that I'm not alone. And I encourage you to ask me if you have any specific questions about Teams or the file or anything else. But uh, thanks for indulging me. and. Uh, I'm actually in a weird way kind of excited for this year. So here's to a good 2020 in the fall.